So dear brothers and sisters, happy Easter to you all. Uh, it's so great that uh, you can join us tonight on the live stream as well for all of you here. Um, from this moment on now, our, our whole community has breathed a sigh of relief uh, as they had to learn uh, quite a number of psalms and different bits and pieces. And um, yeah, thankfully the liturgy begins in the dark because then you don't see the priest or deacon sweat as he's singing the exultate, which is rather long, unaccompanied and helpless if you go wrong. So there you go. Uh, that's, that's, uh, we're, we're delighted to be here and well done to everyone for all you've done so far. This is the greatest night in the liturgical season. This is the greatest night in the history of mankind. Uh, the night that Jesus rises from the dead, everything changes. Everything changes. Beforehand, it wasn't possible to get to heaven. The, the, the source of grace hadn't been opened yet, per se. So we were stuck here. We were stuck in, in our sins. We were stuck then, after this, this life here on earth, in the realm of the dead, into which Jesus uh, descends, as we uh, say in the creed. He descended, descended into, dead, into the dead. So he, there was this realm of the dead, Hades uh, in, in Greek, where Jesus went. And there was no way of getting into heaven before this. So like, like everything changes because of this moment. It, it seems in a, in, in a way so hidden, and so, so hidden and so understated, but everything changes because of this. And so it's, it's, it's why the, the church marks it with such great solemnity. And with an octave afterwards, and then 50 days of celebration for Pentecost. Because nothing is the same because of this. And as we've said a couple of times here, uh, this, this, this shouldn't have worked. Right? This, this, this whole plan to redeem mankind on a cross, how on earth, that, shouldn't, that shouldn't have worked. Uh, because it's, it looks like weakness, it looks like failure. It looks like how on earth could from a crucifixion and a scourging and, and all of the brutality that went on, how on earth could something good come from that? And yet here we are. It worked because God knows what he's doing. And this was the way he chose to redeem us. This was the way he chose to show us his great love. I remember a couple of years ago, I was talking to uh, my brother-in-law, Aidan, and uh, he was telling me about the birth of my first niece. And he said, uh, so they were, they were there in the hospital, and everything seemed to be going according to plan. And... All was, all was well. And so my sister Norma had a heart monitor on. And then as soon as Amy, the top of her head, the crown of her head, revealed itself, came forth, whatever the term is, <laughs> um, they popped a little monitor on her head too. So it, they can monitor the, the, the heart rate and everything. Just to, so you can just see our mom and baby doing okay. Uh, so Aidan was outside, but he was within earshot. So you could hear Norma's heart rate, whatever is normal, ba boom ba boom ba boom And the baby's heart rate, I believe, is faster. Uh, so doing whatever it was supposed to be doing. Uh, so we could hear this, the, 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 all of this beeping going on. But obviously they, they asked him to leave because a father during uh, the birth is absolutely useless and will make generally kind of sports-related, come on, you got this, give it 110%. Do you know what I mean? Just, I think, comments that aren't really going to be helpful. <laughs> in the moment, so the men are understandably are asked to leave. Um, but so, but I say, with, still within earshot, still within earshot. And he said, there was a moment then that, you know, you could hear the doctors talking, and the nurses talking, and they're, you know, saying, yeah, whatever, whatever, giving each other the various instructions that they need to. And then he said, at one moment, he said, both heart monitors flatlined. So you go, beep, 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 beep. Both of them flatlined. And he said, I thought I'd lost it. Now, in this moment, I welled up, <laughs> right? And he said, I thought I'd lost them both. Uh, and then, so he stuck his head around the, around the corner and said, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Has something happened? And uh, Amy had knocked her heart monitor off, and then when they were trying to put her heart monitor on, they knocked Norma's off. So both were okay. Just the monitors got knocked off. But he said, I just, I thought, I, I thought I'd lost them both. And I was just thinking, I thought, what would I do for them? It's an interesting question. What would you do, like in the moment where you think you've lost someone you love, what would you do to get them back? What would you do? 
I think in those kind of moments, it, it matters, it just it matters so, so little how much money you have. You could not care less how much money you have in that moment because you would give it all away to get a person back that you love or a child when they're sick. And this is something I often hear from parents as well, you know, where my child has been diagnosed with this, that, or the other. And you often hear the parents say, I'd rather that happened to me. I'd rather that was me. My six-year-old, my two-year-old doesn't deserve that. I'd rather that was me. And in, 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 in a human way, this is beginning to understand what the heart of God is like. Where when you see someone you love lost, you would give anything and everything for them. And when you see someone in pain or downtrodden or sick, you would rather take that upon yourself. Now all this, like this, this is a spark of divine love, of the love that God has for us. Where when he sees us lost in, in, in sin or far from him or on a trajectory that that's not leading us to heaven. And this does happen. Okay, it's not, it's not, a, it's not inevitable that we end up there. If we're on a trajectory that heads us away from heaven, there is nothing, nothing that he won't give to get us back. And when he sees us suffering, he says, I will take that upon myself. I will give meaning to your suffering. I will give meaning to your life. I want you in heaven with me. And that's what this night is all about. The readings, uh, the, 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 the summary, if you will, of sorry, salvation, everything being created good and with order. God makes order out of chaos. And Adam and Eve live in this, in this beautifully ordered world. Ordered not in the sense that everything is punctual and we have German trains and everything like that. That's not what they mean by order. What it means is everything was in its place. So God in the first place. And then Adam and Eve seeing God's reflection in each other and putting him in the first place and, and having everything provided for, for them. But everything that was created reminded them of God. So even the food, even the animals, everything reminded them of the beauty of God's creation, everything. So everything was ordered, right? Sin then enters the world and disorders things. Where now God says this, yeah, but I don't really care. God has a commandment, yeah, but I think I'll be happier if I disobey. So we take this fruit and we will become like gods. That's what we want, great. We can become like gods. We can decide what's right and wrong ourselves. We can do whatever we want. And then disorder enters the human race. Human nature falls. And that's the human nature that, that we have now. It's good, but it's fallen. It's a good thing. It's, it's a beautiful thing created by God, but it's a fallen human nature. It's broken. And so we see the lengths that God is willing to go to to get us back. There is nothing he won't do. And maybe better said, there is nothing he hasn't done. He's given his own son. What more do we want? What else? What else can we, you know, if we collectively sit down and put together some sort of a document, sorry, what else could God do? What else could he do to win us back? This is how he has chosen, and it works. So what does he ask us to do? What's our response then to all of this uh, huge epic story of salvation what's our like the whole thing back from from abraham up to us today it hangs on on my decision all of this grace available to us do i want it do i want it do i want the lord to be part of my life and again i think the answer seems fairly obvious yeah sure and are we willing to do what the lord asks of us not just to adhere to the, uh, the idea of what it means to follow the Lord, but to actually do what he asks of us. To actually avoid what he knows will guide us away from him, guide us away from true happiness. To actually change our habits, that they include daily prayer. To root out of our lives that which we know is not from, not from him and not good for us. God has given us everything. He has given us his heart. He has given us his flesh and blood poured out for us. And he asks in return for ours, for our heart, for our love. So on this beautiful day, on this Easter vigil, 
where the light has entered the world. We pray that very, very similarly, that light may enter our hearts and enter our church, not just as a building, but as, as this divine and human institution. That the, the light, that when people come here, they may experience joy, family, love, unity, forgiveness, understanding. That they may experience that what it means to be in the presence of, of Jesus. Was, was one last thing. If, you, if you've been watching any of the, the Chosen on uh, YouTube, if you haven't, I'd, I'd strongly recommend it. Sorry to be plugging it. It's, they're not giving me commission or anything. It's, it's entirely free. Uh, but it, it does give us a very interesting, you know, it's, it, it's an opinion, if you will, but it's a very interesting perspective on Jesus. It's based, obviously, very heavily on Scripture. But Jesus is just so likable. And yet, he's, he, you know, he's funny. And yet, it doesn't for a second take away from the fact that he's God. You know, so they, they, they strike an amazing balance between the kind of the humanity of Jesus while still holding the divinity. He doesn't mess around. But this is the kind of God that I, I think we could understand I'd like to be with for all eternity. Do you know, when you see Jesus, how he is with the apostles and how he talks and, and how he takes care of the little things. And how he talks to Peter, who's so kind of impetuous and wants to kind of slap everyone who comes near Jesus, you know. He's like a little terrier, you know, just <laughs> wanting to defend Jesus the whole time. But just the way they represent Jesus, it's, he's just so loving and compassionate and understanding. This is our God. This is the Lord. So we pray today that we may rediscover the joy of following Jesus. And that he may lead us to be with him one day where the light is never put out. Amen.